everyone. Uh, last night, Nintendo unveiled all of their financials uh, for the first quarter of fiscal year 2021-2022. And things are looking up and up for Nintendo, although technically down year on year. Still, it was the second best first quarter in Nintendo's history. So I got all the information here, some quotes, all that jazz, updates on game sales. Uh, it's going to be a long video, uh, but a very uh, informative one, at least, at what's happening at Nintendo and breaking down all that information. Uh, before I do that, though, i got to remind you, we are giving away a Switch OLED console to one lucky winner all you have to do to enter to win is just be subscribed to the channel that's it no special buttons or anything just be subscribed and we'll announce the winner early in october through a live stream All right, folks, uh, so let's get right into the financials. In quarter one, they sold 4.45 million Nintendo Switches. 3.31 uh, million of those were just your base model regular Switch. Uh, 1.14 million were Switch Lite. Uh, this does put the lifetime uh, total sales of Switch officially at 89.04 million. So about a million shy of 90 million. Um, or if you want to look at this in another way, 12 and a half million, uh, give or take a few units, away from surpassing the Nintendo Wii to become the best selling home console of all time. Or if you want to add another 17 million to push that to 29. 0.5 million away from passing Game Boy, uh, and then all they would have in their sites for Nintendo systems anyways would be, well, the DS. <laughs> um, getting uh, into some other stuff, let's talk about the top 10 uh, video game sales. So Nintendo has updated the sales chart for their top 10 games, and here's how it goes. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still number one at 37.08 million. I think it's pretty reasonable to think that's probably going to hit 40 million here in the next year. Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, is at number two at 33.89 million units. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number three at 24.77. And interestingly enough, Breath of the Wild actually closed the gap a little bit here at number four at 23.20 million. Likely going to go into that top three, I think, by the end of this year year. Pokemon Sword and Shield is sitting pretty at number 5 at 21.85 million units. Super Mario Odyssey is at number 6 at 21.40 million. Uh, Super Mario Party is at number 7 at 15.72 million. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is at number 8 at 13.57 million. Splatoon 2 is at number 9 at 12.45 million. And a newcomer to the top 10 is Ring Fit Adventure at Number 10 selling 11.26 million, just edging out New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. So congratulations, the Ring Fit Adventure just continues to be an evergreen title for Nintendo and selling and selling and selling. Now, um, year over year, net sales and profits are actually down uh, 10 to 17%, depending on which category you're looking at. But it is technically, as I mentioned earlier, the second best first quarter in Nintendo's history. Notably, last first quarter, one, we had the pandemic where people were told to stay home. And two, we had the release of Animal Crossing New Horizons right before the quarter began. And obviously, that being the second best selling game on Switch to date, it was still doing really heavy sales during quarter one of last year. So that obviously helped boost sales uh, Where in a way that obviously Monster Hunter Rise... Um, you know, and all those other games that have come out in between have not been able to push sales to the same degree, but still doing really, really well. Uh, Mario Golf Super Rush, uh, which was the latest game released before the cutoff date for Nintendo's financials uh, this time around, had only five days worth of sales data, but has already sold 1.34 million units. Uh, that's only 170,000 behind the best-selling Mario Golf game of all time. Uh, so even as of today here, as we sit in August, it maybe has already passed it and become the best-selling Mario Golf game to date. Uh, so hopefully that, that can keep going. Maybe hit a couple million. That would be really good news for Camelot. Um, speaking of hitting a couple million, Pokemon Snap has sold 2.07 million units outside of Japan. Uh, remember, Nintendo does not publish the game in Japan, so those sales would be separate and from a different company. Um, I Also, by the way... Uh, the original Pokemon Snap sold 3.6 million units. So here's hoping that sales continue to kind of go for Pokemon Snap. It did just get a new update recently, which was really, really good. 
and free. So I hope that Pokemon Snap can find some ground here and at least eventually match that 3.6 million sales the original game did. Because it would be sad if this is the last time we see Pokemon Snap. Um, next up, Nintendo did spend 900 or is planning to, I should say, between now and September 15th, to spend $900 million USD to buy back shares. And what they plan to do with those shares is dissolve them, get rid of them. Um, they're going to be buying roughly 1.8 million shares, which is about 1.5% of the total shares that exist for Nintendo. Uh, by dissolving these shares, it not only increases the value of other shares, obviously by there being less of them, uh, it lowers the chances of Nintendo having to pay out dividends to investors. So investors might not actually like this buyout, but this kind of buyout's only possible when a company is doing very well and really highly profitable. They're still probably going to pay out some dividends. They didn't pay out some from last year, but they've obviously had record profits going now, you know, four or five straight quarters. So they're going to sit here and decide, you know what, we're going to make less shares out there to increase the value of those shares and lower our dividend payouts right now, although it could increase dividend payouts down the line. Um, Nintendo did say this about uh, uh, what they were doing with the money. Um, here's the official statement from Shintura Furukawa. Uh, he says, To take advantage of our favorable cash position based on the performance of the Nintendo Switch business over the last few years, we are conducting a buyback of our shares as indicated on the slide he was showing at the time. As an entertainment brand, we strive for sustainable growth and increasing corporate value by offering unique entertainment experiences that play to our strengths. It is essential to have a solid financial base to continue to deliver surprises through our products and services in a business where trends are frequently profound and the future is often difficult to predict. Based on this belief, we have maintained enough earnings in service of being able to consistently deliver on our mission of creating smiles through uniquely Nintendo experiences. Effective use of cash continues to be an important management tool. We have a strong cash position thanks to the Nintendo Switch business exceeding our own expectations. And as a result, we have fortuitously gained a renewed opportunity to consider how to most effectively invest our cash in a variety of strategic and meaningful ways. In addition to using a portion of funds to buy back shares, we will continue to thoughtfully consider how to deploy funds and investments in the future. And that's really the general breakdown of Nintendo's financials. Um, there's a lot of nitty gritty in there. They also include like a list of games coming out in the future, which are games we already know about. No release date changes. All the 2022 titles, including the sequel to Breath of the Wild, um, is still listed as 2022. Metroid Prime 4 is on there as TBA. Same with Bayonetta 3. So nothing's really changed. So there's no notable things to talk about there. I guess other than mentioning that none of none of the games that currently are announced for 2022, none of the games currently announced with release dates uh, to this point from Nintendo, anyways are at this point going to be delayed so um i guess that is worthy of mentioning but I, we don't need to go through that whole list I, I feel like it's a little bit redundant uh and we could talk about nintendo's 2020 lineup a uh, 2021 lineup the rest of this year uh later i feel like it's actually a lot better than people might think it is at, at first uh, consideration but that being said i'm really uh thrilled here uh, with Nintendo's financials. Obviously, they don't affect me directly in any sort of way other than the longer this thing stays a success, the bigger and bigger my hope gets that this isn't the only generation of this we get, that we get another generation with this with better hardware. Um, so I hope it continues to find success. I hope Nintendo continues to put their best foot forward. Obviously, we've gone a couple of years here where Nintendo first-party studios have not put, output a bunch of games. It's been a lot of the second-party and third-party studios. Uh, so that should actually lend a lot of hope to 2022 and 2023 that we should be getting tons of first party games uh, but obviously we also don't know when the next gen platform is coming if one's going to come as a switch pro reel are they focusing on that at some point so there's a lot of unknown variables right now but what we do know is nintendo is massively profitable which does mean if you're hoping for a price drop on this this holiday yet ain't happening um, same thing with switch oled ain't happening this year maybe next year but ain't happening this year at least so um, good for Nintendo, um, you know, kudos to them, 
and I am happy to see some of the sales of some of the games. But yeah, I, I obviously think Nintendo is in a very strong position, uh, and that's good for them. I hope Pokemon Snap does ends up selling a bit better uh, as, as time goes on. I hope we get more games, more Luigi's Mansions, more, uh, you know, another Pikmin 4. I'd like to see more IPs come back. I'd like to see Star Fox come back, and F-Zero, and, and Snowboard Kids, and 1080, and, and uh, Wave Race. There's so many. F-Zero, F there's so many games that could come back. Kid Icarus. Like, I hope Nintendo continues to invest. I hope you continue to see strong support for switch for the next upcoming years and hey sales are going to keep nintendo pushing it nintendo's not going to abandon pl uh, platforms that are selling maybe we just got off the peak year and this is something to consider sales are down technically year over year does that mean the peak year is done and now we're on our way down we'll have to wait and see i don't know We'll have to see how Nintendo ends. I think if they can end 20 million strong this year, it's hard to argue they're in too much of a decline. But anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch each and every single one of you guys and Skurvo here in my next video.